Thank you very much indeed. It's a singular pleasure for me to welcome you to this lecture, uh, a lecture entitled Nanoscience and Nanotechnology in China, From Fundamental Research to Application. As Keith uh, intimated, this is one of a series of distinguished lectures uh, sponsored by Waterloo's Institute for Nanotechnology in conjunction with the Departments of Electrical and C Computer Engineering and uh, the Department of Systems Design Engineering. And as we know, our speaker today is Professor Chun Li Bai. Professor Bai is president of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, which is headquartered in Beijing. Professor Bai, it is a particular pleasure to feature you in this distinguished lecture series. Uh, we're deeply grateful that you have chosen to honor us by visiting Waterloo today, by giving this lecture, by delivering this, this lecture, and by receiving an honorary doctorate degree from the University of Waterloo at this morning's convocation. Professor Bay is globally renowned as a chemist and a nanoscientist, and as well as being president of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, he's also president of the Presidium of the Academic Divisions of the CAS, and president as well of the World Academy of Sciences for the Advancement of Science in Developing Countries. And so, Professor Bay, welcome to the University of Waterloo. And as Associate Vice President of Research, it's a particular pleasure for me to bring you warm greetings from the research community. And let me assure you that the research community at Waterloo is vibrant and extensive. As you probably know, we have uh, six faculties at Waterloo, uh, a very large faculty of engineering, a faculty of science, faculty of arts, um, faculty of mathematics. In fact, we're the only university in North America, I believe, to have a faculty of mathematics. And we also have two smaller, but nonetheless vibrant faculties, faculty of environment and faculty of applied health sciences. And there are, of course, strong research programs in all of those faculties. But what many of us find very exciting these days is that increasingly there is interaction, research interaction between and among these faculties. Uh, an increased propensity, if you will, towards interdisciplinarity. And this is exemplified by the Waterloo Institute of Technology, which is a co-sponsor of this lecture. And so once again, welcome to you on behalf of the research community. We're delighted to have you here, and we look forward to your lecture. Thank you. Okay. Oh, thank you. So thank you very much for your warm introduction. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be here at this uh, beautiful campus and this uh, very fancy building to uh, deliver a talk. So thank you very much for your invitation. Yeah. So uh, the title of my presentation today is about the nanoscience technology in China. I uh, would like to divide to my presentation into two sections. First, I will give you an overview about the recent progress of the nanoscience technology in China. Then I will say a few words about the future perspective uh, in this uh, area. So, uh, as you know that uh, the, uh, in the later 1950s, uh, Professor Richard Feynman at the Caltech, uh, the invention that technology uh, promise of the 10 uh, machines as uh, small as uh, the few items. Uh, so after the more than uh, three decades of the uh, intense basic research and the focus on the investments, at the global level, yeah, this uh, promise nowadays has grown into a full, uh, fully uh, discipline known as uh, nanoscience technology. So, so far, the five Nobel, Nobel Prizes related to the nanoscience technology have been uh, awarded. Yeah, the, the advance of the development in the uh, vibrant field, uh, creating uh, novel applications with uh, potentials to transform uh, many aspects uh, of the, our lives, uh, material science, uh, uh, environmental science, uh, medicine, electronics, uh, energy, and so on. So Chinese scientists have uh, engaged in uh, this area as, uh, at a very early uh, stage. Uh, so um, I think China is uh, one of the earliest countries 
to uh, initiate research uh, in nanoscience technology. For example, in the 1980s, uh, National Science Foundation of China uh, supported uh, the research in the scanning tunneling microscope. As you know that scanning tunneling microscope is an important tool for the nanoscience and the technology. At that time, there is no commercial available of the STM or AFM because it's just an invention at that time. So after that, the Ministry of Science and Technology, uh, Ministry of uh, Education, uh, Chinese kind of sciences, uh, several funding agencies uh, give a, invest a lot of money on the, uh, the nanoscience and the nanotechnology. So uh, I think uh, in the years two, 2000, uh, we uh, uh, established a national steering committee on the uh, nanoscience and technology. So this committee providing a strategic planning uh, coordination and advice on nano research uh, at the national level. So this committee comprising of uh, scientists from universities, from research institutions, even from the industries. Also 14 administrators from the Ministry of the Science and Technology, from the National Development and the Reform Commission, from Ministry of Education, from Chinese Academy of Sciences, and also from National Science Foundation of China. So uh, I think uh, in this uh, the committee, I uh, serve as a chief scientist. In the year 2006, uh, 2006 uh, government uh, issued uh, long-term and mid-term uh, the uh, uh, development uh, strategy uh, for uh, science and technology. So uh, it aims to turn China into an innovation-driven country and a wealth of science society from the fostering strategic uh, emerging uh, industries. So the government mainly support four big uh, projects for basic research. Uh, the nanoscience technology is one of them. The other three are protein research, quantum modification, mod uh, and the developmental and the reproductive research. So uh, uh, since uh, last year, the nanoscience technology quantum research has been included in the more than uh, 40 big plans. So maybe you know that uh, the, uh, the yesterday Nature magazine just published a cover story talking about uh, the uh, quantum uh, satellites uh, experiment results. So this quantum satellite uh, was launched by our academy uh, last August. The chief scientist is uh, the Professor Pan Jianwei, who is also the, the, uh, the executive vice president of the University of Science Technology of China. That university was founded by our academy uh, in Beijing. So the satellite is a big project by our academy. Actually, in the early uh, 19, uh, the 20, 2010, something like that, uh, government also support uh, this uh, quantum modulation uh, project as a major uh, basic research area. Uh, so various universities and the institutes have been involved in the nano research in China. According to uh, uh, incompleted uh, statistics, more than 50 universities and more than uh, 30 research institutes of academy uh, engaged in the, the nanoscience technology. Uh, and our uh, 300, what? Oh, here, sorry about that. Yes, uh, oh, it's up. Oh, good, it's up, yeah. Oh, yeah. So our 300 uh, companies have been engaged in R&D of uh, nanoscience and technology uh, with more than 3,000 researchers uh, in the total involved in this area. So in the year 2000, we uh, 
uh, established a national center for nanoscience technology. With this center uh, uh, co-sponsored by uh, the Chinese Academy of Sciences and the Ministry of Education. So uh, several directors, research groups from the Institute of Chemistry, from the Institute of Physics, and from the Peking University and the Tsinghua University, we work together in this uh, national center. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the vice president of the Peking University and the vice president of the Tsinghua University, you, both of them used to be the uh, deputy director of this uh, national center for uh, nanoscience and uh, technology. So next, I would like to introduce the funding uh, landscape in China on the nanoscience and technology. Uh, I think the main funding bodies for our nano research are the SFC, the National Science Foundation of China, uh, and the most uh, Ministry of Science and Technology. But of course, uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences is under uh, the investments. Invest we also invest a lot of money on this uh, area. Uh, our academy uh, has also set up the funding programs to support the research of nanoscience and technology. So this figure shows you uh, the, uh, the uh, overall funding. Uh, I think the major research program by, by uh, National Science Foundation of China uh, about the USD 32 million uh, in the uh, past uh, ten, more than 10 years. Uh, so. Um, uh, I think the, for our academy, uh, we uh, supported uh, uh, the project uh, in the area of the scanning probe microscope and the related topics at the nanomaterials, nanoscale from the 1980s. Uh, through the knowledge innovation program, the field of nanotechnology is an important direction uh, for a total of 28 projects. Uh, five years, starting from the five years ago, we uh, initiated the, the strategic priority uh, program. We also supported the uh, uh, nanoscience and the technology. Uh, different funding agencies, uh, they have their own priorities uh, for supporting uh, the research in this area. But I think the nanomaterials is also uh, they got um, uh, the mainly uh, support uh, by uh, different funding agencies. So I think these uh, are the, 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 the statistics uh, based on the uh, nano resources by nature, uh, China. You know, they, uh, this uh, figure shows you uh, oh, the, the y axis is a proportional of the total global output uh, published. Uh, in the area of the nanoscience and technology. Uh, uh, the, uh, I think in the, it indicated that the China's contribution uh, to the global output of the nano papers uh, by the source by the keywords, we'll use the keyword nano. Uh, you, you count the, 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 the number of the paper uh, in ICI. So I think that the publication uh, by uh, Chinese scientists uh, have grown steadily uh, during the past uh, 20 uh, decades. Uh, the, the, the red line representing the paper published by the Chinese uh, scientists is uh, growing up. Uh, here is uh, the uh, country contribution to the top cited uh, the 10% of the nano papers. Uh, we know that uh, the number of papers is not uh, important but the quality is more important. So that's why we are talking about the top 100, just to the 100, uh, top cited uh, uh, one percent uh, uh, of the nano papers published. So you also can see that this graph shows uh, the China's contribution to the top cited one percent of the nano papers uh, has grown sharply since uh, year 2007, uh, which accounts for uh, around half of the global total, uh, exciting the U.S. since uh, 2014. So I think that's uh, 
also indicator, say uh, the quality of the research in the nano uh, area uh, in China uh, also uh, pretty good, uh, increasing. So here is the list of the top uh, 20 research institutes uh, in the nanoscience technology in the world. Uh, uh, the, the y-axis is the paper contributed to the uh, top cited 1% uh, in the nanoscience and the nanotechnology. We are not, say, the total paper published, just the 1% top cited the nano papers. Uh, this list the top 20 research institutions in the nanoscience and technology. So I'm proud to say Chinese Academy of Sciences is number one. Uh, in this uh, the figure, uh, you know, in the past past uh, the, the, the few years, uh, but you can see our academy is uh, the large organization. Uh, but from here, you also can see the count the Max Planck Society and the national, I mean, the CNRS and the Russian Academy of Sciences also as a one uh, unit. So. If we uh, the further look into the detail of the paper distribution in about five countries, uh, we will see that the nano structure, structured materials and nanoparticles are among the most being uh, invested uh, in these uh, five uh, countries. So as for China, nano catalysis is the most uh, active field, while the electronics uh, for U.S. and uh, Germany. China and the U.S. also put great efforts on the nanomedicine uh, research uh, from the, those data So on this uh, figure. Uh, this is also uh, we, 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 we uh, statistic by the uh, uh, end of the last year. Okay, now I'm giving you some uh, few examples about the basic research uh, we have uh, uh, the achieved by uh, uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences and by the uh, uh, other research groups in China. Uh, they, this is uh, um, the researchers at the uh, National Center for the Nanoscience Technology uh, explored the technical of the scanning tunneling microscope to study uh, physics and chemistry at a single molecular level. Uh, this work has been done by my former students, uh, Chiu Xiaohui. Uh, he led this uh, group in the National Center. This paper published in the uh, science uh, two years ago or three years ago. So I, the, uh, recent, they, they, they demonstrated the ability of a water light the, in real space, the hydrogen bonds uh, formed by uh, this uh, molecule. Uh, which uh, at the on the carbon 111 substrate. So from this uh, high resolution image for the scanning probe microscope, you can see the hydrogen, hydrogen bonding, the network here. This is uh, the first time you can uh, directly uh, analyze uh, to, uh, to see the hydrogen bonding uh, in a real space, uh, real space. I think the, uh, this image was selected as a one of the 12 uh, images in the 2013 by uh, Nature magazine. What's rising in the white molecules with uh, uh, chemical uh, recognition uh, is a long-standing target in the catalyst. The so molecular nanotechnology and uh, the biotechnology. So molecular vibrations provide a valuable fingerprint for such identification. Uh, the vibration of spectroscopy based on the tip enhanced uh, Raman scattering allows us to uh, access uh, the spectral signals of molecular species very efficiently with strong localized plasmonic fields produced by the tip uh, packs. So Professor Ho, Ho Jianguo, who is used to be uh, the president of USTC, but now he moved to the, uh, the other governmental agencies. But he led the research group in the uh, USTC uh, University. 
of science and technology of China uh, it, to uh, demonstrate the Raman spectral imaging with a special resolution below one nanometer, resolving uh, the, uh, the uh, inner structure and structure configuration of the, a single molecule. Uh, so this technique not only allows for chemical imaging at a single molecule level, uh, but also offer new way to study the optical processes and the photochemistry of the single molecule. I think in the history of the nanoscience technology, carbon nanomaterials occupy a most important position. You know, fluorine, carbon nanotube, and, uh, the, uh, and the other, uh, the graphene, and, uh, and other, other the nano, uh, carbon nanomaterials. Uh, the, the interest in the synthesizing and the discovering new carbon nanomaterials were never stopped. So during such uh, exploration, the Chinese scientists in the uh, Institute of Chemistry, uh, Chinese kind of sciences, they uh, synthesized a uh, uh, unique uh, the, uh, carbon nanomaterials. Uh, they call the uh, graphene. Uh, it's a new carbon of a single uh, inexpensive and readily accessible materials with uh, novel electrical, optical, and magnetic properties. So this, they have published several uh, papers because uh, they, they uh, is kind of the high P conjunctions, uh, uniformly distributed the pores, uh, the two able uh, electronic properties. So uh, uh, this group uh, continues to, to, to invest. Uh, the properties uh, of these uh, the materials. Uh, uh, they, they found that the, some properties are uh, supposed to be better than uh, graphene. Uh, as I mentioned before, the nanocatalysis is among the top research fields in China. And there are several groups uh, in the research. Uh, for example, Professor Bao Xinhe in the, uh, uh, the Dalian Institute of Physiochemistry uh, has uh, fabricated the lattice confined single ion sites uh, uh, embodied in a silicon matrix to achieve direct uh, mono uh, conversion of the uh, uh, methane to ethylene, uh, aromatics, and hydrogen. So this may enable the development of the non sense guys based on rules to transform light hydrocarbons into a high value added chemicals. So I think that uh, recently this group also developed a new technique to directly uh, convert CO uh, carbon dioxide, uh, CO2, to the, to, uh, to the gasoline. Uh, uh, there is another group in the Shanghai Institute of Advanced Study, uh, headed by the Professor Sun Yi Han, also in, uh, belong to our academy. They recently developed a new uh, technical in this area, theoretically convert CO2 to the gasoline. Uh, I think that's a very important discovery. They just have a published paper uh, in the uh, nature, uh, nature chemistry. Uh, the, the, the head of this uh, group also is my former student. Uh, so the Professor Bao, uh, who used to be the director of the Dalian Institute of Physical Chemistry, uh, and moved to the as an executive vice president of, of uh, Fudan University. But recently, we just appointed him as a president of USTC. Uh, I was in went to uh, Hefei uh, to, to announce uh, this is a new appoint, appointment, but he has done excellent work in the nanocatalysis. Yeah. Uh, the other works, including uh, how to uh, you know, selective uh, hydrogenation of the CO group against the conjugated CC group in the alpha beta 
uh, are saturated uh, uh, the uh, materials, so which will open a new avenue for uh, many important but uh, highly challenging uh, reaction. So uh, here, this uh, technical provide a clear interface interactions to able uh, uncoordinated sites for uh, activating uh, reactants and the porous structures for uh, facilitating uh, mass transport. Uh, this uh, work just published by Nature uh, the last year. Uh, I think that this is one of the important mission of the you know, nanoscience. The so far we have uh, established various methods to evaluate the bio effect and uh, the, uh, the uh, safety uh, of the nanomaterials from the molecular to a cell and to animal levels. So from molecule level to cell and to animal. So establishment of this uh, systematic platform using integrated advanced uh, analytical techno technicals uh, for uh, biomedical effects of the nanomaterials uh, is uh, very important. So we can do something that in vivo uh, codification and distribution, in vivo transformation, and chemical changes. Uh, this group in the National Center for Nanoscience Technology also published uh, 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 many papers uh, in this area. Yeah. Uh, also, the Professor Liang in the National Center firstly reported that the carbon nanotube can attenuate uh, the behavior of the neurochemical effects of uh, yeah, the, some, uh, some uh, the biomaterials. Uh, uh, but these uh, experiments uh, demonstrate that the carbon nanotubes uh, facilitate oxidation of uh, excess uh, uh, dopamine uh, as a critical regulator for the neural uh, dependence. So we uh, also continue this work. Uh, we got uh, many uh, support uh, in, in uh, this area. Okay. Uh, clearly, uh, nanoscience is no, no longer the stuff of the, of the science of fictions. Uh, nanotechnology is uh, helping to uh, considerably uh, improve, uh, even uh, revolutionize uh, many technology and industry uh, sectors. So here I would like to give you uh, the other example, which uh, invented by the uh, research group, uh, headed by Professor Song. Uh, at the Institute of Chemistry, uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences. So we know that uh, for uh, the printing, the printing industry is uh, one of the backbone industries, uh, the expanding printing market, uh, the increasing uh, environmental concerns call for uh, digital printing uh, plate making technology. So there are mainly two kind of uh, plate making technology. One is a laser phototype sighting uh, system. They need uh, two steps, uh, the photographic development, uh, as so in the figure, the up, upper side. Okay. The, the other technical uh, being used uh, is a CTP, it's an international mainstream of technology. But this still need the one step uh, photographic uh, development. Uh, so, um, but because uh, they, uh, they, they, they need the photographic uh, development that made some, uh, you know, the wastes, uh, the chemical development cause the liquid wastes uh, discharge. Uh, also, these two kinds of technicals need pre-coating the waste resources. About 80 or 90 percent of the pre-coating will be developed uh, after X process. So like the Fuji, Kodak, and Agfa, they use the same uh, things to produce uh, the, the plate for, 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 for printing. So we developed a new uh, technology. Uh, this is uh, quite different. We, we, uh, you, we just 
input the picture and the text information, input this picture and text information to the computer, then directly to printing the plate without any uh, uh, exposure uh, chemical development. Uh, all the processes generally uh, is uh, no need to avoid light, no pollution, it's low cost and recoverable. I think this uh, techno technical uh, have been used in China for producing newspapers and some like the magazine uh, books. The recently uh, we uh, have prepared an exhibition uh, in the Zhongguanshan area. Uh, all the, uh, the, the materials hanging on the uh, wall, we just use this, uh, we call it the uh, nanotechnology, a uh, green printing technology. Uh, I think the other things uh, we, I should mention is uh, standardization. Uh, the China is one of the first countries uh, to address the importance of the nano standardization. This is also the mission of the nano centers. So far, the nano center has developed strategic plan and a roadmap for Chinese nano standards. They are involved in the uh, coordinating and implementing, implementing all major research programs uh, in this area. So the, the, we have been leading the standard development. The five international projects uh, is uh, issued by uh, a Nano Center. Uh, it's uh, about 50% of the total number from China and the 40 national standards issued by the, uh, the national center. This, this, uh, the above, I just give you some uh, the uh, uh, examples about the basic research and the application of the nanoscience technology uh, in China. Now I, I just say a few words about the future perspective in the, the, this area. So look into the future, we are facing uh, many challenges uh, related to the nanoscience technology, such as uh, identify long-term strategic goals of the nanotechnology to ensure long-term stable, uh, focused financial support and build tech transfer infrastructures yeah, to reinforce multidisciplinary collaborations and education and to improve societal awareness of the public support. This morning, I uh, attended this uh, the ceremony. I noticed that the University of Waterloo can give the degree in the nanotechnology. I think there's a few universities can do that. Yeah. So there's a can force the, the many uh, young talents are working in this area. I think the, the challenge in nanoscience we are uh, facing is one is how to uh, uh, precise synthesize uh, the nanoparticles building blocks. Okay. Secondly is uh, how to maintain and boosting nano effect during uh, hydro article uh, the, uh, the as, as, uh, uh, assembly uh, or uh, fabrication. So uh, challenge two is a uh, killer application of the nanotechnology. For example, uh, how to uh, make the small molecules can act as important uh, in the mediates for uh, synthesizing value-added chemicals, which uh, has been attracting a great interest. So it is a great importance to construct a multi-functional catalysts for effective uh, activation and the conversion of inner chemical bonds to obtain value-added chemicals, especially for the CH4, uh, hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, those are very small molecules. Challenge three is how far can we push the nanoscience in the nanomedicine? So, uh, Continue with, uh, I mean, 
So, oh, okay. So, this, uh, uh, this is uh, important, uh, the, the challenges. Uh, uh, I think the standard, standardized uh, nanobiomaterial, biomaterials uh, for bioimaging uh, and, uh, and the therapy is uh, important. It is a hope to finish up uh, the roadmap of the uh, uh, systematic biology from the molecules, cells, tissues, or to the living objectives. So all those is, uh, contributions will benefit to uh, uh, clinic uh, translation and processing uh, medicine. To meet these challenges, Chinese Academy of Sciences uh, continue to focus on uh, both fundamental and uh, uh, applied research, trying to advance from the large research uh, country uh, in nanoscience to a strong one. Uh, so we should uh, integrate, in, integrate uh, the whole research capacity of the CAIS. Uh, that's why we uh, set up the strategic priority research program in our academy to design to achieve major innovative breakthroughs and from advantageous research clusters by making full use of the it is uh, uh, competencies in the multidisciplinary uh, research because uh, we have more than 100 research institutes in the different uh, areas uh, we uh, would like to uh, to uh, to make the uh, coordinate coordinating uh, them uh, together uh, to fix the major challenges uh, in the nanoscience technology. So, okay, so I want to uh, say this uh, few words, sentence uh, to, uh, to end my uh, presentation. China has made a top-down design on the nanoscience technology and puts forward the nanoscience technology, uh, improved the research ability and achievements both in fundamental research and application. But look into the future, we need to identify key scientific issues related to the industry and the social needs, uh, promote collaborations across disciplines and among the industry, government sectors, and universities. I think this we can learn a lot from the University of Waterloo. You are the experience uh, you know, uh, excellent, so the combine the industry and uh, you know university study together. The students, the the, the back and forth, uh, work in the industry and study the university. So I just I should learn uh, the, from your experience. Uh, so. Uh, uh, I think we need a lot of the international cooperation. Uh, but this time, I just very short. I will leave you tomorrow. So I hope I can uh, come here again to get more uh, information uh, to, to learn more from your side. Thank you very much for your attention.